Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Happy Easter to you all. I'm Peter Armstrong. I serve at uh, St. Bryce's North Bay, and I'm officiating today. Uh, the Reverend Kate Scott is going to be our reader. Preacher is Archdeacon Joan Locke, and uh, Janet Parfit is the musician for us. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Opening him, Jesus Christ is risen today. Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. Our triumphant holy day. Hallelujah. Who did not Let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Rejoice then, even in your distress. We shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. God has claimed us as his own. He called us from our darkness into the light of his day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Oh come, oh, come let us worship. 
Easter Catechal, Christ our Passover. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia, Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Alleluia, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The first reading is from the book of Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2. 14 to 24. Gives thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Holy and mighty God, your son's triumph over sin and death has opened to us the gate of eternal life. Purify our hearts that we may follow where he has gone and share in the radiance of his glory. We ask this for the sake of our risen Lord. Amen. The second reading is from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, 
which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I've handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some may have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sequence him, Christ alone. Lord be with you and also with you 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and they do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to the father, to my father and to your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. These were not the words of Mary Magdalene as she arrived at the tomb on that first Easter morning to find the stone had been moved away. She immediately assumed the worst. The grave robber, robbers had taken him away. And who could blame her, considering the miscarriage of justice, the brutal treatment of her Lord, and the horrific death that he had suffered in the short days before? We're told she ran to Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved, John, the writer of today's gospel, that Jesus' body had been removed. They, in turn, ran back to the tomb to see for themselves. John reached the tomb first, but didn't go in. It was Peter who looked inside first, and then John. John tells us that when he saw the linen clothes by, cloths lying there, he believed. But neither were his or Peter's words, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. It simply tells us the disciples returned to their homes. Finally, Mary looks into the tomb of her Lord. She finds the linens as well, but also two angels, one at the head and one at the foot of where Jesus had been laid. They ask her why, is she, why she's weeping. I imagine between her grief and the vision of the angels, she would have had great difficulty getting her words out. They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. And she turned away, distraught, only to find a man standing there behind her. 
He also asked her why she was weeping. I imagine her now feeling quite frustrated as well as grief stricken. She has gone to find help from Peter and John, but they didn't help her at all. They didn't help her find her Lord's body. The angels were of no help, and now this man who she anticipates is the gardener is also asking her why she is weeping. Is there anyone who will understand her grief and help her find her Lord? As she begins to tell her story again, she's all but interrupted by this stranger who says one word, one single word, Mary. In that moment, she recognizes who he is and she knows herself known and loved. Her grief and fear melt away as she swings around to look full in the face of her risen Lord. Her heart swells as she addresses him, Rabboni, which John tells us means, means teacher. Jesus, her Lord, sends her off to tell the others that he has indeed risen and that he will ascend to the Father. Now she runs off to share the good news, to share the gospel, if you will. And her words, I have seen the Lord, are her personal message that of Alleluia, Christ is risen. The next we read in John's gospel, which we will hear next week, is about Jesus appearing to his disciples in the upper room without Thomas. Thomas shares his doubt with the others as they tell him, we have seen the Lord. And a week later, when Jesus again appeared to them, including Thomas, do you remember Thomas's words as he recognized Jesus? That's right, my Lord and my God, my Lord and my God. Not one of us was born knowing the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Each and every one of us had to be told about him and about it. Maybe we grew up learning about Jesus. Maybe we didn't hear about him until we were adults. Maybe some are just beginning to learn about him now. Regardless, each of us has been evangelized. Each of us has been the recipient of the good news. In the same way, at some time, each of us must come to the place and space, time and space, pardon me, where we recognize Jesus as my Lord. Mary identifies Jesus as my Lord as she tells her tale of woe in the garden. Thomas identifies Jesus as my Lord as he's invited to touch his wounds and put his hand in Jesus' side. Do you identify Jesus as my Lord? We can know all kinds of things about Jesus. We might be able to win Bible trivia contests we might be able to quote scripture, be able to tell, or pardon, pardon me, be able to recount the events of the three-day ordeal from Monday Thursday through to Easter morning. We may be faithful attendees at church. We can do all these things without ever, ever having recognized Jesus as my Lord. And how do I know this? Well, I've just described myself until I was in my mid-30s. To look at me from the outside, I looked like I was a dedicated disciple of Jesus Christ. But I wasn't. And even I didn't really know. It wasn't until the moment that the penny dropped from my head to my heart. It wasn't until I heard that one word, Joan that I knew myself known and loved. It wasn't until I had figuratively placed my hand in Jesus' side that I recognized Jesus as my Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, my brothers and sisters in the risen Christ, I invite you now to take a moment to bow your head and look at who or what is the Lord of your life.
And I and now invite you to look into the face of the risen Lord, to hear him speak your name, and to speak back to him, Rabboni, my Lord and my God. Now, if this is something you've already done, I invite you to renew that acclamation. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Amen. Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now continue with the prayers of the people. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory, that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That by his power, wars and famine may cease through all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us. Lord of glory. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, and for the wonder of life, for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us tasks which demand our best efforts, for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation. For his dying, through which he overcame death. For his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known. And through him, at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Lord of life and power, through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have overcome the old order of sin and death and made all things new in him. May we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, reign with him in glory with you and the Holy Spirit is alive, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And then we the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the risen Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Him, the day of resurrection. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <laughs>